how am I trying to get my students more invested in the classwork? By having them choose the activities themselves, both the topic of them and their design. Keep watching to find out how I'm doing this and how it's going so far. Hey there, I'm Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is for teaching tips for new college instructors. And you know, mostly I talk about recently ed tech and hybrid teaching and online teaching. And today it's more of a general video, though it can apply mainly to hybrid teaching in the sense that I've been struggling with student engagement, which I've mentioned before. I have a video on tips of things I'm trying out, as well as a video on the five struggles that I'm dealing with most with hybrid teaching. And I'll link those both below. But engagement, right, is a key thing that I want to do. And we're now in unit three. So I decided to actually tell them, you know what, you're gonna choose how the classwork is designed in this whole unit so that I know that it's things that they seem to think would work best as far as activity design, as well as what content they need to see the most because they have a need, because they're confused, or because they have an interest, because it, it's something that they actually prefer to do in my particular courses. And so how I did this is I used Kahoot to ask these questions and get their responses from them. So I'm gonna actually show you my screen and show you the Kahoot I did, both the questions I asked as well as the results I got from them. So here's the Kahoot survey. And as you can see, it's only six questions and they have 60 seconds for all of them, but the last because it's a much f uh, faster question to answer. But just to kind of show you what it is, I have every single red answer is considered the right answer just because I use a free Kahoot, so it's a quiz, it's not a poll. So I just told my students, hey, you know, it says the red is the right answer, but really, you know, you're gonna choose whatever one you want to work on. So for my first question, what I, when I have what part of writing research papers are you having the most trouble with? And I have, you know, the four potentials that I thought might be most likely, right? Creating a good thesis, adding direct quotes and paraphrasing smoothly, using MLA citation, and finding enough to write about to reach the length requirement, okay? And so after that though, I then started asking, as you can see here, what class activity type do you think will be the most helpful for your learning? And so I have one tied to getting the th to the thesis, and then I have one tied to doing the in-text citations. And then I have one that's to help them use research to support their points rather than opinions or stories. And then I have as well this one where it's more like smaller details of you know, what things go, relating to grammar, to syntax, and that kind of stuff, do they want to work on more? And so I have here punctuation or run on incomplete sentences, more general grammar errors, or just looking at, you know, where do you spot informal language and how do you change it into formal language? And then finally, I asked if they were having trouble finding academic research using the library, library database, yes or no. That's why it's such a short answer, uh, the 30 seconds rather than 60. So six questions, asking them what are they having the most trouble with, as well as here are some activity designs that we can potentially use, which one would you prefer? And so I asked them this in class and they gave me the results. And so what's great is in Kahoot, you can go to reports and you can see here, right? So this is for one of my classes. All right, you have the first question and I can see how many students chose each answer, right? So in this case, most of them wanted to focus on adding direct quotes and paraphrasing smoothly, but there was a lot about creating a good thesis and finding enough to write about. And so what did I do? We had a session about creating a thesis and then we had a session where I gave examples of thesis, and then I had the activity that they chose in question two, which is giving public feedback to their thesis statements. But then I also have, after that, activities practicing directly quoting and paraphrasing before I give them the public feedback, which again is the activity chose in question three, right? And then for finding enough to write about, I required an outline again, which I hadn't done in unit two, but I did in unit one, so I required to get in unit three so that when I gave them feedback, I can say, okay, this is gonna be enough. It definitely should be considering how much you're covering or looking at this, unless you go into tons of detail about each of these points, you'll probably fall short. Here's some of my other ideas of what you can add to this paper to lengthen it. So really designing my activities based off of knowing how much they wanted these kinds of things. Right, so right here, they chose definitely doing the public feedback, right? Um, then they have for the paragraphs, the in-text citations, once again, getting that feedback live, 
right? Um, though I did do reading and discussing some examples of in-text situations before doing the public feedback because this is a longer unit and we had the time for it. So I did that second one because it was the next most popular one for both of my classes. And after that, very simple. Do they wanna do debates or do they wanna do a group project? By far and away, obviously, debates were the winner here. So that's still coming up and I'm using the flippity prompt generator that I talked about a few videos ago for that activity. So I'll link that below too in case you wanna see how I'm using that. And here, right, so again, kind of thinking more of grammar and, and syntax, what do they want the most help with? This one was more spread out, right? So I'm gonna actually create an activity that has all, top, all the top three rather than just uh, the general grammar errors. I'm gonna include you know, sentences that are run on or incomplete. I'm gonna include punctuation errors as well. So knowing that was helpful as well. And, and then finally, the question about are they having trouble using the library databases? I had the split answers for both my classes. So immediately afterward, I actually remind them, here's the tutorial I created for you, the video tutorial of how to use the databases. Let's go over it again in person, live right now. And so I did more of that with them immediately afterward to really knock this off the list because of course they need to find the research very early on in the unit. So to recap, the two key things here is to ask not just about class activity design, but also what type of topics I wanna to cover in certain class activities. Because in my case, you also wanna know how many weeks your unit is, right? So mine is four and a half weeks. So I know that I can cover all the activities they chose as the main one, as well as some activities they didn't choose as the main one, but maybe were secondary. And then there's also weeks that we have free, days we have free, where I can now do activities related to the topics I said confuse them the most. So in that way, I have enough to cover my whole unit, but it's days that I knew I wanted to cover thesis statements, for example, days I knew I wanted to cover body paragraphs, but now I know, all right, well, we had this free day where we could have just done drafting if we didn't come up with anything to discuss, but actually they want to discuss more about grammar errors. They want to discuss more about run on sentences, okay? And so I can create activities for that purpose. Now, something to keep in mind is that I teach two different classes. It's the same class, but two different sections. And for the most part, there was wide agreement on the activities they preferred to do. But there was a slight difference in what confused them the most. Not for my first question, but for my second. So that means that I'm creating different activities for that particular question. And so obviously it's more work on my part, but I would prefer it just to help them get what they need from me, right, from this class. So be careful that you might end up having to create a lot of different activities if the various student groups choose very different things to do as their preference. So kind of a warning, but I think it could be helpful, right, to know, all right, well, they chose this, might as well try it out to see if it actually does increase engagement. And that's what I kind of want to cover at this part of the video. So like I said, I was super surprised that they both groups chose the activities activity design that I was already using of giving public feedback, which I also mentioned in how I'm doing course design and grading differently in hybrid teaching. I'll link that one below too. But turns out both classes preferred it for both the thesis and the body paragraphs. So I did find that by adding an extra section about how to create strong thesis statements, I had examples, like seven examples that we went over. I gave them templates of how to kind of structure thesis statements. So I did do that secondary uh, one that they liked too after the public feedback first, and then I did the public feedback. And I found that I do think that first step was needed because in the public feedback, many of them were very successful in creating an argument and thesis statement, but I still had some who were like, I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of this. And I was like, no, no, you have to choose one side, right? You can't just describe arguments, you're making an argument yourself, right? And so there was higher success in getting them turned in as well as getting what they actually needed to do in the actual thesis statement. But of course, it's like one sentence, so there wasn't that much of a worry, but I did see improvement by doing both activities. And then after that, I had the body paragraphs one. And again, since my unit is so long, I did the secondary one that they preferred. So going through examples of paragraphs that have quotes and paraphrasing in them in MLA, and then I did you know, giving public feedback to their body paragraphs. I also had a small group activity that was possible where they each had to come up with uh, paragraphs with in-text in citations, though I gave them the topic sentence to start the paragraph with. 
And that one didn't go as well. Hybrid teaching and group projects is always a struggle because you have the ones in class are one group and then the ones on Zoom are in breakout rooms. So since we're not all together in that way where they can ask me questions quickly, I didn't feel it went that well. So that's one thing that luckily it wasn't the, the activity they chose, their biggest preference. It was just one I added because we had time for it, but I wouldn't do it again because it wasn't very successful. Um, so then we did the public feedback and like usual, it went as it's always gone. So I'm hoping that means that they really benefited from it. I did see some improvement in definitely the MLA, right? So they had a better sense of, oh, let me add in the author's name either in the sentence or if it's not there, then include it in the parentheses, right? Oh, I didn't have a page number. That's right, right? So I did see improvement in MLA and the body paragraphs still at the same level that I'm used to seeing from them, right? So that ranges depending on the student. But overall, I was happy that at least the citation part did go better than it has in past units. Now we're only midway through the unit, so I still have coming out the debates, which is something new that they're trying, that I'm gonna be using that uh, flippity prompt generator that I gave a tutorial for a little while ago, I'll link it below. So I'm gonna use that to create the teams for the debates as well as the topics they're covering. So we'll see how that goes, as well as creating those activities about the grammar errors and wrong sentences and all that. That's still coming up as well. And I'm trying to find a way to gamify it to make it more interesting rather than here's you know handouts to fill out in class and then we'll go over the correct answers. That can be kind of boring, though helpful. So I'm trying to find a way of gamifying that. Um, so I will do an update video once the unit ends because I have those two activities coming up and then my usual self-assessment and peer review activities, which are two assess assessment strategies I really recommend. Um, they're included in the video that I have about assessment strategy activity ideas. Uh, but so I still have those four to go and we'll see what it brings. And then I have the presentations of this research paper as well. So that I'm excited for. So I will do a follow-up, so if you want to make sure to see what the end uh, point of this experiment was, go ahead and click subscribe below so you don't miss out on those future videos. I am currently doing now a Tuesday tip video, so a small two-minute kind of video with a quick tip that can lead to ma major improvement in your teaching life, as well as these usual longer Friday videos. So that will be happening for the rest of the year. So if you don't want to miss those videos too, the Tuesday tips, then again, subscribe below. If you found this video interesting or helpful, click like, and I'll see you next time with a new video.